Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 439. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Bishop Terrell Glenn. And today is September 26, 2016. Okay, welcome to another program of Anglican Unscripted. As you can see, I have a brand new guest we've never had before. And let me tell you how this started. I got a comment three months ago that says, Kevin, you don't report on any good news. All Anglican Unscripted is, is you know, the, the breaking news of the communion, it's great, we get to learn a lot. Uh, you tell the truth about all that stuff, but you don't tell us any of the good news. So I said, I'm going to work on that. And part of you being here is me working on that because the Anglican Church in North America recently had a, a House of Bishops meeting, College of Bishops meeting. Uh, you guys were out in Long Beach this time. And I said to Andrew Gross, the communications guy, give me somebody. Put somebody on the air with me who can tell me what happened to the media. And we're going to give the people good news and talk about a church that knows how to deal with the problems and has nothing controversial. Therefore, on the other end of my Skype conversation is Bishop Terrell Glenn. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, first of all, uh, you guys have just uh, survived the hurricane that hit the, the shores of North and South Carolina. How's, how's it going down there? Well, thank you for asking and thank you for your prayers. We, we in the Charleston area are doing very well. We're very blessed to have been spared, but we grieve for our brothers and sisters further up the coast and certainly in North Carolina who have been just deluged with water and wind and now water that went in inland's coming back out at them, going back to the sea and the flooding is tremendous and that flooding is now making its way into parts of South Carolina as well. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done to help rebuild and restore and um, so we're glad that people are praying. Well, we want to uh, have people keep checking dice and websites so they can update and know what to pray for and if there's a giving involved they can give. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, uh, College of Bishops meeting you guys had out in Long Beach. Uh, the Anglican Church of North America has certainly matured a lot in uh, 10 years, and uh, um, it's interesting to see what you guys are uh, sitting down to talk about. And remarkably, there's a, a prayer book right on the horizon. Uh, tell me how that's going. Well, the work on the prayer book is going very, very well. We're getting very close to the conclusion of the preparation to be able to have the prayer book ready by the assembly. There will still be some work to be done on the ordinal, on the institution of a rector, the dedication of place of worship, and the psalter. That will be done at the January meeting of the College of Bishops, hopefully to have it ready for the summer of 2019. Uh, we're still taking comments on those last sections up till the 1st of November. So hopefully anyone who looks and reads and wants to make comment, they do that in the appropriate ways to the task force so that those comments can be taken into consideration and brought in to the discussion. Well, it's good to hear. And now also one of the first documents that came out from the ACNA was a draft catechism. And uh, mm -hmm. that's also in, in its final workings, but not much has changed. I mean, that's just how good the document is. Uh, there's been so little changes to it over the over the last couple of years. Well, you're you're exactly right. It's, and I, I trust that this is a true gift to the church. Um, it certainly has been a labor of love. It's some very faithful people have been working on it. Our work in Long Beach most recently was simply to make a few changes um, to suggest a few extra passages of scripture to add to some of the parts, but not much other substantive change was made. I was talking to another bishop and said we had to do something that showed that we at least participated <laughs> because it was such a good document. <laughs> we had to show that <laughs> we at least did something. So no, it, it's true. It's, it's one of those things where um, obviously, we had 2,000 years of experience, but it, it really showed up well on paper. Well, I certainly hope that parishes, dioceses can find good use, whether it's with confirmation classes being used for discipleship, taken as a whole or taken in part to teach various 
parts of the doctrine of the church, but to have a teaching tool like this in this day when what we, I think, are learning is that we had substituted good churchmanship for discipleship, and there's a difference. Um, and so this allows us to focus um, even more intently on discipleship. Every time I end up in the Carolinas, I end up talking to a bishop about Don geographical diocese. Um, and because, well, in South Carolina, there's six bishops uh, overseeing this uh, geographical area. And the topic is, well, when are you guys going to discuss it in, in the College of Bishops? Oh, we discuss it all the time, just not officially. Um, and I said, well, I see it's it came up this time. I thought I'd talk to you about it because you are a bishop in the Carolinas. I'm sure that it affects you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, explain to people what a non-geographical diocese is first. Well, a non-geographical diocese can be one of several things. It can, by definition, it's a diocese that is not defined by a specific geography, whether that is a state or a half of a state or any, any known ge geography. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a regional diocese, one that goes well beyond the borders of a state and takes in like uh, the eastern seaboard or the mid-Atlantic. Uh, or it could be more of an affinity diocese. Uh, we saw many of those types of dioceses or networks in the formation of the ACNA. Um, when different jurisdictions came together, bringing their particular ecclesiologies and certainly their organizational structures to the table. And in the formation of the ACNA, the desire was as best as possible to honor those, to find a way at least to begin, though we acknowledged then this will not be the way we'll operate forever because it won't work if we try it. But we also know that there's a season, however long that is going to be, there will be a season when we will have both geographic and non-geographic, uh, whether those are just large regional dioceses or affinity-based dioceses, um, mixed together doing mission as the Anglican Church in North America. Well, I'm sure this is a topic that never comes up in the Diocese of Pittsburgh, but down in the Carolinas, you guys deal with kind of stumbling over each other uh, quite a bit. Um, what are some of the discussions like in this? Well, probably the best way to put it is that we had our first formal discussion um, at our meeting in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a great meeting. Um, it was putting on the table questions that people had, really checking in with each other to make sure everybody understood what the breadth of this was. But probably most importantly, um, having discussion about what is the best way forward? What do we look for to create greater cohesiveness, greater unity? What are the things that will be required of us to do that? And we all acknowledge that there needs to be an even greater level of communication, a greater level of, of cooperation, especially around church planting, to be able to communicate with all who are involved in a particular geographic area. Um, by a decision to plant so that those aren't made as unilateral decisions, um, but instead are cooperative. Now, is the goal one day to have just geographical dioceses, or is the goal just to work together? Well, I would say right now the goal is to work together because, again, when I, when I say that it was the first formal sure. discussion we had, we certainly have had plenty of parking lot conversation about it. Um, and, and some of that conversation has been very, very fruitful. But it was very much time, and the Archbishop, in his wisdom, said, let's, let's spend some time to begin the conversation, to define terms, to begin, in fact, to talk about what is the preferred future, and to walk through it in a careful way so that we can be thorough rather than rush into a decision that when we look back over our shoulders, we realize we forgot four different situations. So that we began the conversation. I can't say that there was a decision to, by a certain date, to have all geographic dioceses, because we didn't make that decision. Um, we don't believe we're at the time of, we're at the point of making that kind of a decision, mm -hmm. as we still understand the realities of what's on the ground and how we'll work together um, to get to a more cohesive, unified, 
Anglicanism in North America. The hot topic, as far as I'm concerned, uh, since the beginning of the ACNA was holy orders. Um, mm -hmm. How is the ACNA going to deal with this as a structure? Are they going to tackle it one day and make hard decisions? Um, or do they really know who they are? Or will they discover who they are in the discussion of holy orders? And obviously there's a task force to put together. And the bishops had a meeting in Canada um, last year, was it? A year ago. A year ago. Um, where you guys sat down and you, you had tough discussions about it. We're not going to talk about it because it's conclave-based dis uh, discussions. But in that, I think the ACNA learned that you're not binary on the issue. You're not all one side or the other. There's a lot of gray area in that. And I see that you discuss this issue again at this House of Bishops. Uh, any update? Well, the update is that the, the conversation is far from over. Uh, yeah, sure. In terms of, um, of the bishops knowing that we have the responsibility of providing to the best of our ability um, biblical, faithful, orthodox teaching on all matters, including holy orders. Um, but we also do that in the context, just not just as being a solitary province, but also being members of GAFCON, where there is the same diversity of Absolutely. theological sure. understanding of holy orders. And so we know that any conversation we have, we don't do in isolation, and that we also want to do it in participation with our GAFCON brothers and sisters. That being said, it's much like the Anglican um, Unity Task Force's work with the overlapping jurisdictions. Last fall was the first formal conversation we had um, in response to the work that was done by the Holy Orders Task Force. And you summed it up very well. Uh, the discussion that we had in our meeting in Long Beach was really the fruit of the Archbishop asking for a working group, not another task force, but a working group to be formed of several bishops whose job it would be to keep the question in front of the college so that that group would meet and look at the issue, make recommendations to the archbishop for the agenda of our next meeting of the college to find the time and the way for us to, to discuss another aspect of holy orders knowing that we just began the conversation, we also don't want to uh, relinquish the need to continue it. And so that's what the working group's charge is. And so the working group brought uh, the fruit of their first meeting to the meeting in Long Beach to say that they met, they're gonna meet, we'll, we'll meet again this um, in, a, in about a month um, to look at how we'll recommend the conversation to be picked back up in January at our college meeting in Melbourne, Florida. The last time you met at the uh, College of Bishops, House of Bishops, excuse you know, the terminology exchange here, um, your archbishop was just another ordinary archbishop. This time you meet, and he's not just an ordinary archbishop, he's the archbishop and uh, the person in charge of all of GAFCON. Uh, does that add a little bit more uh, intensity to the room? I, I don't know what you're talking about now. <laughs> yeah, I know what. <laughs> it, it, changed, it changes a good bit for us, um, but in many, many good ways. It is certainly presents challenges. Obviously, he has been chosen by the GAFCON primates to step in beginning in April of 2019. As you know, we actually have an election for a new archbishop in uh, the summer of 2019 at our assembly in Christ, at Christ Church Plano. Um, and so without presuming anything, we talked about what would the impact be, or how do we presume that we'll be impacted as a province um, if in fact the Archbishop were to be reelected and he would be continuing that role as chairman of GAFCON. But to be quite honest, we spent more time talking about some of the opportunities for participating in, in well, playing our role with global Anglicanism, and that it is a tremendous opportunity. And um, many bishops uh, commented and stepped up to say that 
he would be willing to pick up an extra load to make sure that things in the province don't suffer as new responsibilities are taken up by the archbishop. Um, but there's clear recognition that this will impact the, the province and therefore the comments have been made to say we need to look at how we function as a province to see who could step up to take on responsibilities so that Archbishop Beach could step into the role to which we all fully believe he's been called. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no question about that. It was interesting. Uh, Archbishop Justin Welby uh, touched the shores of America. He landed in Texas and they had him put on a howdy doody hat. And uh, then he uh, went to uh, Trinity Wall Street and got some money and flew on out. But uh, I think there's a sense that this isn't tech country anymore. This is uh, ACNA country. And uh, it's going to be interesting to watch as your church grows and uh, has more, uh, not to say power, but influence in the GAFCON provinces around the world. What's really going to happen in the future? Bishop, I do want to thank you for your time. I'm sorry that the ACNA put you on the spot like this, but you did a really good job. Well, thank you. It's been a privilege. I very much appreciate the ministry that you have received from the Lord and you've taken up because you serve Anglicanism very, very ably. Thank you.